our superintendent, Dr. Padilla. Thank you, Madam President. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I have two items, uh, 2.1. Uh, well, Andy's not here, so I almost, well, I'll just say to all of you who are here, I want to just express my deepest uh, appreciation to, I'm really amplified tonight. Yeah. Uh, it's okay. Uh, so as you know, we opened schools last week, and uh, that just doesn't happen quickly and easily. Uh, but what I can say is that it's the reflection of a team, uh, an assistant suit of finance, an executive director of buildings and grounds, and our team of individuals who work tirelessly uh, to make sure that the first day goes without great concern. Uh, you know, these were very hot days, uh, but our schools look phenomenal. The grounds look uh, extremely well, and I'm always amazed by how you can walk through an elementary classroom and it looks like they've had it set up for months when they've only had but days. Uh, and so Andy's not here, but I would just thank him personally. And if you see him, uh, just please express your appreciation for what he and Greg and the entire division was able to do to make sure that our schools were up and running. Uh, this is the time of year when a lot of changes are taking place to transportation. So to Greg and Mark and the team, thank you for making sure uh, we had hundreds of buses uh, delivering thousands of students to school and to their homes and you know it's not a perfect system uh, but it's one that our kids can trap you know travel safely to and from home and as those parents who come in to share concerns we've tried our very best to accommodate them so thank you. Uh, item 2.2 uh, is the second goal for the school year. Uh, if you remember, we had a conversation two or three weeks ago where I presented three goals, the first one being around ESSA implementation. Uh, and at that point, I shared that myself, our deputy superintendent at Forget, as well as other representatives from the district, uh, attended mandatory training. And this is very new to us, but it's part of our reality. And so the federal government has required that states come up with plans on how to execute the federal uh, guidance. New York State has, uh, in the spring, approved the plan, and now districts are required to follow what the states have provided. Uh, and so this is going to impact every district in the state. Certainly, it will impact us. And so we are doing a number of things to be prepared. And so that's why I made that a goal. And then you approved goal three, which was around an equity focus. And I continue to applaud this, uh, this Board of Education, both locally and nationally, for staying committed to the equity work. Uh, and so this year, we will continue to do our best to eliminate achievement gaps and close them. Uh, and so thank you for approving that goal. And then the one that we're bringing back, um, because you asked for several uh, additional tweaks to be made, was around our good to go system. So uh, four years ago, we implemented this good to go system and it's taken uh, several iterations uh, to date. Very exciting iterations, uh, which I think is a sign of how an organization continues to, to grow. Uh, and so at this point, the goal that I'm presenting to you is during the 18-19 school year, the superintendent will enhance the district multiple pathways to graduation by executing the good to go system in grades 6 through 12. Uh, we've only had the good to go system in 9 through 12. The new 6 through 12 good to go system uh, will allow the superintendent and, and administrators to triangulate data to assess student growth and achievement. Uh, and there are a number of different action steps that uh, we're willing to put in place this year that are brand new to allow us to achieve that goal. So tonight I present to you this revised uh, goal. So I'd like to entertain a motion, please. So moved. Questions or discussion? Does anybody have any questions or discussion, especially on that goal too? Okay, if 
No? Roll call, Mr. Clark. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Ms. Mineo? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Mr. Stridiron? Yes. Ms. Santiago? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Johnston? Yes. Thank you, Madam President. That concludes my items. Thank you, Dr. Medea. We're now at the section of the agenda for public discussion and comments on agenda items. Please refer to the regulations regarding discussion and comments that is posted next to the sign-in sheet. Would, and no, and we sign that. So would anybody like to address the board on agenda items? If not, we're going to fly by. I have no items, so we're going to go to board committees. Today, library committee, Mr. Johnston. Thank you, Madam President. We had a meeting at the library committee today. Um, we were given reports which allowed us to catch up on all the activities of the library over the summer. Uh, those are available to everybody through the board doc site. Just to highlight two items that we uh, that came up at the meeting, we had a presentation by Heather Hendrickson. Um, as you may know, the library has a wonderful local history collection, and there's uh, there's been a project over the past several years to digitize items from the collection and make it available on a website. And some of this material is really remarkable. First-hand reports of uh, the Civil War and many items relating to local history in Newburgh. Um, so she showed us how to access that. It's an easy link from the library homepage. And one other item, um, the library uh, put in place a new policy that uh, forgives fines for uh, youth library card holders. And this is an effort to remove any obstacles there might be between uh, children and their books, uh, a substantial amount of fines was forgiven, and many cards that had been locked for various reasons are now uh, available for the students to use. One thing we would have discussed was how to uh, let the students know that they should come to the library and enjoy their privileges. Thank you. Um, our uh, policy committee was canceled today, so we're going to be, or postponed, we're going to be rescheduling that. Finance committee, Mrs. Santiago. Good evening. Um, excuse me. We, we met earlier and we uh, discussed some of the items that are going to be on that are on today's agenda, including uh, executing the insurance renewal, uh, which are actually insurance consultants, uh, disposing of uh, obsolete equipment and furniture, um, contract with South uh, Southern Westchester Boces, which was for last year, um, uh, approving the Cold War veterans exemption, um, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to move on. Our, we have no items from our deputy superintendent. We're going to move on to our assistant superintendent for curriculum and instruction, elementary, Mrs. Felice. Good evening, Madam President. This evening for elementary, we have one agenda item, item 7.1, the resolution to approve conference requests. I'd like to entertain a motion, please. Second. Questions or discussion? Roll call, Mr. Clark. Ms. Bedeo? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Mr. Stridiron? Yes. Ms. Santiago? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Johnston? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. That concludes our elementary items. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mrs. Felice. We're going to move on to our Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum and Instruction Secondary, Dr. Spindler. Thank you, Madam President. Um, tonight I have um, just item 8.1 to present. Resolution um, to approve field trip request. I'd like to entertain a motion, please. Uh, questions or discussion? Mr. Levitz. Thank you, uh, Madam President. I just have a, a couple of questions, and, and I did ask, and I did get some answers, but I'd just like some clarification. I, I, the first thing I was wondering is why a um, a sports event is going under field trips, uh, an athletic event would be going under a field trips uh, under the curriculum department to be approved. And, and I, I still don't understand why that is. And, and I just want to say, the questions that I'm asking is not looking for a way to say no to this. It's looking for a way to say yes to this, because that's what I want. But I wasn't clear on the resolution just in, in general, and, and why it's coming up in this format when other athletic events don't don't go through the field trip um, process. Okay, um, because they're taking the trip um, during the school day, and it is um, out of the state. They post it to the curriculum committee, and then we put the resolution. 
Okay. So if that's the policy and that's the procedure, that that's that's certainly fine. I wasn't aware of that. Thank you. Any other questions or comments, Mr. Jones? Could, could we get a sense of the costs uh, for the two items that are funded via the general fund? So for the trip to um, Six Flags, um, I do have that information. The cost of one bus costs four hundred and fourteen dollars and thirty cents. So, if I could, I'm only interested in the total with this. Oh, the total. Just, just, um, just so that, that idea of that. I'll do my math really quick. Eight hundred and sixty-four dollars and thirty cents. Any other questions, Mr. Sterling? You look like you had a question. Just want to make sure that the, the trip does not include the admission fee to the park because it's like thirty-five dollars each. Um, per, so it's four hundred and fifty dollar fees to participate in the invitational, and the parks fees um, to participate in the park activities is included. They don't charge the students an additional fee. It's their reward. <coughs> Are you sure? Any other questions or comments? Roll call, Mr. Park. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Mr. Strinar? Yes. Ms. Santiago? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Johnston? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Ms. Maneo? Yes. Thank you, Madam President. I have one item for this evening. It's high point one of recommendations of the CSE and CPSC committees. I'd like to entertain a motion, please. Oh. Questions or discussion? Roll call, Mr. Park. Mr. Strenard? Yes. Ms. Santiago? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Johnston? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Ms. Maneo? Yes. Ms. Brokosh? Yes. That concludes my notes for this evening, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Bayer. We're going to move on to our Assistant Superintendent for Finance, Mr. Kern. Thank you, Madam President. Tonight, Finance would like to present for consent agenda items 10.1 through 10.6. Would any member like to separate out any of these items? If not, I'd like to entertain a motion, please. Second. Questions for discussion? Yes, Ms. Santiago. Under item 10.2, um, requesting the reduced uh, facility fees and so forth, I was just, I'm not familiar with the one of the organizations, so I just wanted to know a little bit about if anybody can share that. Um, the girls on the run Hudson Valley, uh, the letter that we got, uh, I guess, when they started in 2012, I think it mentioned 13 girls from Cornwall and 8 girls from Newburgh. So I was just curious what, if anybody knows the breakdown now and how many girls are participating. Are there any other questions or comments on finance items? Roll call, Mr. Park. Ms. Santiago? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Johnston? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Ms. Paneo? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Mr. Schrenard? Yes. Madam President, that concludes the items for finance for this evening. Thank you, Mr. Kern. We're going to move on to our Assistant Superintendent for Human Resources, Mr. McLemore. Thank you, Madam President. On the Human Resources agenda, uh, Consent Agenda, I have items 11.1 through 11.5 for your consideration. Would any member like to separate out any of these items? I'd like to entertain a motion, please. Second. Questions or discussion? Yes, Mr. Strudeiner. Item 11.4, what is the SMOA for? Uh, 
Uh, so this is in reference to uh, summer school work for an administrator. We had a signed SMOA uh, prior to the start of summer school. Uh, when they looked at their enrollment, um, they made a request to Dr. Green asking for an additional uh, administrator. And so in order for this person to get paid, uh, we need to create a second SMOA uh, to get approval in order for the employee to get paid. Are there any other questions or comments on uh, meeting the resources agenda? If not, roll we'll call Mr. Clerk. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Johnston? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Ms. Maneo? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Mr. Strenire? Yes. Ms. Santiago? Yes. That concludes my items, Madam President. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McLemore. We're going to move on to our clerk of the board, Mr. McCoy. Thank you, Madam President. I have the approval of the minutes from August 28, 2018. I'd like to entertain a motion, please. Second. Questions for discussion? Roll call, Mr. Clerk. Mr. Johnston? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? No. Ms. Mineo? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Mr. Strenire? Yes. Ms. Santiago? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. That concludes my items, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. McCoy. We're now at the portion of the agenda for public discussion on non-agenda items. Please refer to the procedure sheet next to the sign-in sheet. We have no one signed up. Would anybody like to address the board on non-agenda items? Please come and uh, state your name and where you live. And Hi, good evening. My name is Erin Hughes. I live in the town of Newburgh. My son Alexander is an incoming sixth grader at Heritage Middle School. And when he came home to stand on last Thursday, there were two critical items that were missing from his head. Or a certain course. And I realized that everything is chaotic. In the first week, I'm an educator myself. I teach college and not just community college, so I know how crazy things are. So I left a message with his guidance counselor, who was also brand new to the school, so it was, it was equally chaotic for her, on Friday morning. And he got back to me today, informing me that sixth grade students were going to be unable to participate in orchestra, band, and chorus due to block scheduling that's been assigned for all sixth graders. Uh, this is the first I've heard of this, and frankly, it would have been really instrumental um, from a knowledge perspective for me in choosing a preference for a middle school. And I know that you know, it's, it's a choice, but it's also a lottery. And we had some choices as to whether we wanted South or Heritage for a middle school. And I know that South has a performing arts program. My son is quite invested in performing arts, and that choice was not something he made lightly in going to Heritage. And a big part of that was that he would be able to continue in orchestra and chorus, and then hopefully be able to catch back up with the drama aspect of performing arts in high school. So the parent or the counselor had suggested to me that at this point, because of the block scheduling conflict, the only option might be an after-school program that would be available for sixth grade students for orchestra, band, and chorus, but that was not even a real suggestion yet. It was just kind of a thought that he had that might be available. And my initial concern was not about staying late for school, my son would be willing to do that, but that he would now be removed from 7th and 8th grade. Also, there was no indication of, of lesson instruction at all included in this, so it was really quite a step back for me. It would be, like I said, exclusive of the 7th and 8th graders. This is troubling to me on a number of levels, two in particular that I feel are worth mentioning. One. As a parent, I'm wondering why students and parents were not informed that the ensemble music would not be available. This is a significant aspect of education and development for many scholars, my son included, but certainly he's not unique in this. Secondly, the proposed solution to reintegrate in 7th and 8th grade if an after-school option is not available seems quite impossible. Most music educators would concur that once a student has lost a year of instrumental instruction, the odds of return are marginal at best. A year lost is detrimental to their development and their progress. And while a private lesson may be an option for some, it's not an option for most to be able to continue to progress with their instrument in the hopes of being reintegrated a year later. They'd be a year behind their peers. I can tell you from a personal standpoint, the highlight of my son's 
year in fifth grade was making all county chorus and old district orchestra. That's no longer an option for him if that isn't available in Heritage Middle School. So as a student who thrived in the performing arts electives myself in this very district, I see the powerful impact that it's had on my son. And I think it's shameful that this valuable element of education and overall growth is so easily dismissed. So I guess my point in being here today is to kind of just make people aware and to try to understand why this wasn't knowledge that was presented to us earlier and that we're only finding out in, in state three for this week too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We don't give and take. Okay. Dr. Padilla will check with you later. Cool. Thank you. Would anybody else like to address the board on non-agenda items? If not, oh, go ahead. Madam President, I feel compelled to say a few words about, uh, about music heritage. Uh, I'm very glad that Ms. Hughes came here today, and the reason I want to speak is I want to make it clear to everyone that her observations are not a one-off event, and I'd like to go on record sharing every one of the concerns that she mentioned. Um, at Heritage over the past several years, it's been a recurring problem, the scheduling of music, um, particularly for the, uh, for, the, the, for the kids who are doing well academically. Um, they didn't have time to practice. The uh, scheduling of the groups was neglected. Uh, and in the end, they suffered the loss of some very good staff because of those problems. Um, music is a very significant thing for the development of students. And participation in all district orchestra, chorus, and band uh, is an important thing. Um, it is shameful that the district doesn't support uh, the efforts of the students to learn music. And the scheduling of uh, uh, instruction for the students is important for those who can't afford uh, to go to private lessons. Um, I just wanted to make those comments. Thank you. Thank you. Would anybody else like to address the board on non-agenda items? If not, I'd like a motion to adjourn this meeting. Second. Roll call, Mr. Clark. Mr. Levinstein? Yes. Ms. Maneo? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Mr. Stridiron? Yes. Ms. Santiago? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Thank you. Good night. See you in two weeks.